Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the Paradigm AI Smoke Woods and Irons from Callaway. What a moment back in 1994, the US Open in Western Pennsylvania at Oakmont Country Club. It was the final US Open for Latrobe's Arnold Palmer, who spent the first two rounds playing with another Western Pennsylvania native, Rocco Mediate. So with that, I'm so pleased to welcome in the man himself, Rocco Mediate. <laughs> so good ah. to see you. Um, we have been looking forward for a while now to looking back on your career highlights, your journey of how you've got to this point. But first of all, we want to start with your close relationship with none other than the King, because uh, this is a week yes. where we get to celebrate the life and legacy of Mr. Palmer. Now we know you're a Western Penn uh, guy. You grew up just a couple of miles from his hometown. What was it like mm -hmm. ultimately sort of watching someone from your hometown become a national treasure and and if not the greatest golfer of all time well i just you know i i, I met mr palm when i was 19. so it was like i didn't really care i didn't even follow much golf probably till i was 15 16 give or take so i never really knew i knew who he was but you know my dad always talked about him and everybody always talked about him but then i got to meet him and then the whole game changed for me it was um i don't know it was like like a second father and then I, like I've always said I've learned more from him about just being than golf you know what I mean just the way to be or try to be I mean we, I, you could try to be like him but you could never quite get there so he he taught me a lot I spent a lot of time with him in the office he watched me at balls a lot at Latrobe and at Laurel uh, Laurel Valley and um luckiest person ever me so just you know been able to talk to him whenever I needed to talk to him he was always there. What was that? He very... still is. He still is. Of, of course he is. And what was that uh -huh. very first interaction like when you when you first met Mr. Palmer? Well, I've told the story. It's a good one. It's um, I was playing at Greensburg. I grew up in Greensburg. And I was at Greensburg Country Club. It was a Wednesday morning. And I was going to go play um, with my buddies at Greensburg at like seven. We always would tee off at seven, play thirty six, and be done with the day. And um. I got a phone call from Chris Adams. Chris Adams is a dear friend of mine and Danny Bonar, dear friend of mine, and Mr. Palmer. He, they did a lot of traveling with him in the 60s and 70s. Um, so they were real close and they always promised me a game with them. And you know, I was so shy. I, I really was kind of happy I hadn't had one yet because I, I didn't know what I would do or how I would, I, I wouldn't be able to deal with it. So I get a phone call and it says, uh, Chris, I, the glory comes out of the pro show and says, yeah, there's Chris Adams needs to talk to us. So I ran inside. He goes, hey, we got a big money game. They were teaching me to play for money. They were, they were great. Um, at Latrobe, come on over. So I went, okay. So I blew off my guys, my guys Dave, all the guys I play with, Dave Lucas, Bob Bradley, Arnie Cutchell, all those guys, and I'm going. So I went over to, to Latrobe, not thinking that I was just going to be playing with Danny and Chris and probably some of the other guys there. And they always played a, a little money match, and they were kind of teaching me how to play for, you know, money. And I walked, I get out of my car, walked around past the pro shop, around the corner, and Mr. Palmer would always hit, there was no range at Latrobe then, so he'd always hit balls off the first tee, he'd have a shag bag there, and hit balls off the first tee. And as I walked around the corner, he was hitting balls in the first tee. And I'm thinking, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Just as I was about to turn around and get back in the car, Chris saw me, he goes, hey, you're not leaving. Get your butt over. So I go, oh my God, here we go. So I go up and get to the first tee and you know he's still hitting balls and chris introduced us and i shook his hand and it was like i'd known him for a hundred years it was that that kind of i think everybody says that about him really um and then we played golf and and it was the greatest time and from then on i was he was like i don't know he was definitely a mentor but he was more of a, a good friend i spent a lot of time with him yeah. a lot of time with him and i got yelled at a lot too from him by the way <laughs> <laughs> so, and no matter what, you never won the argument. It was ne you couldn't win, so you didn't even try. I tried a lot of times. What we kind had some drag out stuff, but it was great. It was great. What kind of stuff did he yell at you about? Oh well, um, here's one good one. Uh, well, first of all, he taught me one thing. He did teach me that I, I've gotten really well better at. We'll say, he said you always look people in the eye. You never look any, if you're talking to someone, look them in the eye. Well, back then I couldn't even look in the mirror at myself. I was so shy, right? So. I learned over the years, he goes, when you sign an autograph, they better be able to read it. I'm like, all right, because, you know, if you look at his autograph over 70 years, right, mm -hmm. they're all the same. I mean, I mean I'd, I'd be in the office, he'd have stacks of pictures, he'd be just signing, either talking to me, yelling at me, something, and they were all perfect, just like this, all day, boom. 
all afternoon. So, but I remember, I remember I won the the, the um, Greensboro in '93. I was very fortunate to beat Elk in a playoff, a three, one, two, four hole playoff. Yeah, four holes. So the next day I had a, um, a Latrobe Hospital thing for him at Laurel Valley, right after, you know, Monday, I think it was. These are Monday or Tuesday, anyway. So I just won the tournament. I'm so happy, it was my second time I won and all this, you know, it's great when you win anything, right? So I get back home, go out to Laurel a Valley, just, you know, kind of 20 minutes from where I grew up. And Doc Giffen comes up and he goes, hey, the boss wants to see you in the office after you're done playing. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be great. He's gonna tell me how great I am. He's so happy. You know, it was great. I couldn't wait to get there. So I get done, do the thing, go over, zip down to Latrobe, 15 minutes away, and I go in the office. And he's at the desk signing. He's got his, I don't have my glasses. He gives it, I'll put the glass. He gives it this. He's got his little reading glasses on. He's signing his pictures like this. And he kind of looks up and he goes, just like this. And he goes, so I see you backed into one yesterday. So I'm looking at him going, what? Backed into one? He goes, yeah, you were, you know, you're, I saw you hitting balls in the range. All of a sudden, you're in the playoff. I went, Elk birdie the last hole to get into the playoff. I thought I won outright, but he hit this amazing shot a couple feet and made birdie to tie me. So that's how that conversation started. And then he said, during that conversation, he goes, you need to play more. You don't play enough. I'm like, I, I play like 30 weeks a year. You know, I have two, what, I have two kids at the time. Yeah, and, Mar and Rocco and Nico. And Nico um, so we got into those arguments. It was great. But I'm looking at him going back into one. It was a four hole. I mean, it was insane. But it, that was his way of saying nice work. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he was, he was tough. He wanted, you know, I, I, he wanted the best out of everybody. Um, and I, I remember telling him, I said, look, I'm not you. I doubt if I got 60 wins in me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, so, but we had, the, I played a practice rounds with him in Augusta, obviously my first Masters in 91. Mm -hmm. That was kind of fun. Um, I mean, it was just, and then played the U.S. Open, his last Open at Oakmont, that was insane. He should have made the cut that week, by the way, but um, mm. it was insane the, the, how lucky I was to, to, to be from there and then to get to know him, you know, like I did over all the, you know, zillion years. It was, it was amazing. It was amazing stuff. What were those? I talked for days about it. Yeah, it's amazing, and, and you're yeah, so passionate days. about your stories and your relationship with him. What were those first couple of rounds like uh, at that 94 US Open? Just talk us through walking those fairways oh. with Mr. Palmer. Well, first of all, I got a call, and I think it was, that was when I had surgery a month after that Open. I had the back surgery, because I was a wreck in 93, 94 especially. And the USJ called me, because I was exempt for the Open. I think, yeah, because the money list, I finished high in the money list the year before, in 93, something like that. And um, they said, hey, we want to pair you with Mr. Palmer in his last Open. Are you able to play? Well, I couldn't even walk at the time. And I went, yeah, I could play. I couldn't play. This was probably three months before, two months before. So I get good enough to where, feeling good enough to where I could go play Westchester, which was the week before Oakmont. And I made the cut at Westchester. I don't know how. And I played four days, got to Oakmont, feeling decent, played a practice round with myself, um, Lee Jansen, who was defending U.S. Open champion. He won at Baltus Roll that year. Uh, Mr. Nicholas and Mr. Palmer. So how about that practice round? <laughs>